Hello viewers, welcome back to African of Sense, where we dive into the remarkable stories of um, individuals shaping the landscape of science, technology, and engineering in Africa. I'm Patrick Hamouni, your host, and today uh, we have a special guest with uh, a profound uh, passion for human genetics and its applications in healthcare and research, particularly within the African context. Please join me in welcoming Lexi Timina. <laughs> Good day, Lexi Timina. Thank you very much uh, to be with us today. Please, can you present yourself like that for the people who don't know you? Thank you very much, Patrick, for this very nice opportunity. I'm really grateful that you invited me for this. Um, so my name is Lexi Timina, as Patrick has mentioned. I am currently an intern at the South Africa Medical Council, uh, working with the genomics department. And yeah, as Patrick said, I am very passionate and interested in human genetics in a way that can benefit Africans particularly. Wonderful. So, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah that's, that's a very basic background of me. I am from Kenya, uh, originally born and raised there. And then I came to South Africa to do my studies for um, undergraduate and postgraduate. You have had remarkable experiences, including Bell Informatics training and your role as a junior research assistant. Can you share more about these experiences and the skills you have acquired along the way? Okay. So uh, bioinformatics is particularly not my field of speciality. However, when I was doing my postgraduate studies, which is um, postgraduate in human genetics, is when I first encountered bioinformatics and I saw how important it can be in the use of human genetic studies. So there I got exposed to it because I was doing a study in Vitiligo and we were able to analyze the genetic variants of an individual who was suffering from Vitiligo. And yeah, that is just one of the uses that I got exposed to. But as I mentioned, bioinformatics is a really huge tool and it's something I really encourage um, other scientists in the field to know because it really helps, especially with analysis, and it will quickly give you the answers you're looking for. So yeah, that has been my experience with bioinformatics. However, now as I work as an intern, I am getting very hands-on um, experience in lab techniques. So some of these include um, nucleic acid extraction, so that is your extractions of your DNA and your RNA. And then quality control analysis, just to check the quality of the nucleic acids. And then we do what we call a library preparation as well. So that is preparing your samples to be able to go into sequencing. And very fortunately enough, I have been able to get a chance to also get training in next generation sequencing, which as you know, we get DNA sequencing, RNA sequencing, which can give us very important information in human genetics research. Mm -hmm. The passion for precision uh, medicine and gene therapies uh, is a driving force in uh, Lexi's Timina uh, work. Now, let's uncover the motivations and projects that fuel uh, this passion. Please, could you elaborate on what specifically excites you about these fields and um, any particular goals or projects you are looking forward to? Okay. So with precision medicine, um, in the context of human genetics, this is um, tailoring treatments to individual genetic profiles. And therefore, this has the potential of giving more effective treatments and medical interventions. So what really got me interested in precision medicine is we, when I was doing my postgraduate, we had a class where we spoke about um, pharmacogenomics. And in this class, we were talking particularly about a case that was studied in Zimbabwe, whereby, um, I'm not sure if you know of Professor uh, Colin Masim Mirewa. No. Not yet, <laughs> not yet, but very soon. <laughs> okay. So he's the founder of the African Institute of Biomedical Science and Technology. Mm. And uh, his work was, it was very beautiful. So it was about how 
the medication that uh, some people in Zimbabwe were taking for HIV and it had very adverse drug effects so they were neuropsychological effects and obviously this will discourage individuals from taking the medication properly because you don't see it as worth the suffering that comes with it but only later did they find out that it was individuals with certain genetic traits um certain genetic variants that were reacting this way therefore it just showed me that if we can just put in um, research into understanding the genetic variation in Africa. We can be able to help people and make sure people get the best treatment they can. So that is how I got my interest in precision medicine, because it's something we can directly apply in this time. We don't have to take too long. It's something needed now in order to improve people's lives in terms of treatment. So that's mm -hmm. how um, my interest in no. Uh, precision medicine comes in yeah very interesting and then, sorry it's very interesting really yeah. Yeah, so it, yeah it was a very very interesting study and um there's many more being done on many other drugs and yeah i'm really hoping that this is something that can continue for african individuals just mm -hmm. to be able to because it's something that can benefit so many people you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. For gene therapy, I mean, just as the name suggests, it's it's exciting. Like to just think that we can actually out make some alterations in the DNA to remove a disease from someone. That's that's really interesting. And like, it's not far fetched. Like this is stuff. A few years ago, we were just seeing in the movies and science fiction, and we didn't think there's a time that would come that it would be real. But here we are now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's. There's obviously it's expensive and it's a lot of research needs to go into it, but it's not impossible. We've, we've seen that it's not impossible and hopefully soon um, it's something that can be invested into Africans as well. So things like uh, sickle cell disease have been seen to be very prevalent in Africa and this is something gene therapy can address. So, you know, it's mm -hmm. something yeah, I really hope to to see come to life soon because it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen to me, uh, in your perspective, what are the significant challenges and opportunities in advancing human genetics research in Africa? How do you plan to address uh, these as uh, you progress in your journey to becoming a medical research scientist? Yeah. So with challenges, um, I think like any other scientific field in Africa, the biggest issue is that with resources and the infrastructure because we need advanced technology, we need state-of-the-art labs in order to con conduct um, high-quality research. And unfortunately, as where we are now, we're just not there yet. I find myself to be very fortunate to be doing my studies and my training in South Africa because then I've been exposed to a country that has invested in these resources and you know I hope that soon other African countries will follow suit um, because yeah it's it's a very beautiful um, opportunity to be able to have resources to do genetics research. Um, the other challenge is, uh, particularly for human genetics, is that there is underrepresentation of uh, African population in genetic studies. So, with African um, countries and African people having high genetic diversity, we miss out on um, very important information that will be beneficial to Africans. So. It hinders this understanding of genetic variation that is specific to African communities and even limits how, so like when our studies are done out there, we can't just generalize and say that this is the, how it is with every individual in the world, because if you haven't studied African individuals, you can't really generalize those findings and say they apply to Africans as well, because we have a different set of genetic diversity uh, compared to other people. And I think, yeah, it's very important, like inclusivity is a really important thing to consider in human genetics. And I'm really happy to see that it's something being promoted, it's something being discussed. 
that we do inclusive research in an ethical manner and make sure Africans are not left behind in the progression of genetics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, community, mm -hmm. community engagement plays a crucial role uh, uh, um, in your journey. Let's explore this aspect further. Please, um, how do you see community engagement influencing the progression of genetics and healthcare? especially within African communities? So um, I worked as a volunteer in a home where there was many disabled adults who were suffering from all kinds of disease, be it genetic, be it because of accidents. But it just gives you as, even though I was not doing it as a scientist or as a researcher, I think it just gives you this opportunity to see the people that you can potentially help not just doing your work at the lab, never meeting these people. I think it's very important to just see these people and engage with them, understand their struggles. It just kind of connects you to that aspect that you are actually in the position to help a human being. Um, so like with genetics, obviously community engagement will be important in that you can let individuals know why you're conducting this research, how it will benefit them. And this is not just going to be a benefit of you, the scientists. You need to let them actually understand what you're doing in the simplest way and make sure they know that you're doing it in an ethical manner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the academic journey often shapes one's perspective profoundly. Mm -hmm. Will you take yes. us through your educational journey highlighting key projects and their impact on your understanding of the field of human genetics? Okay. So for my undergraduate, I studied at the University of Pretoria in South Africa, where I did a BSc, which was a triple major in human physiology, psychology, and genetics. And of those three, well, obviously, since I'm here speaking about genetics, you can obviously know I chose the path of genetics. Um, I think throughout the undergraduate, I was a bit unsure which path I'm going to take. I was not exposed much to what is happening in the fields. But when I got to third year and we did a module in genetics in human health is when I knew this is the path I'm going to follow. I do not want to take any other path mm -hmm. when I just see the potential that genetics has in human health. And with that, I carried on to do my postgraduate honors in human genetics at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. And yeah, that, that really opened up me to this whole other world of human genetics that I didn't even know existed. And yeah, it was, I had really amazing lecturers um, who are really good researchers as well. And they really helped shape um, my interest in human genetics. But mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Lexi, uh, Timina, what are your future plans and aspirations in the field of human genetics? How do you envision uh, <clears throat> contributing to the advancement of research and healthcare in Africa? Um, I am really hoping to, first of all, I, I decided to take a gap year this year, an educational gap year, just to get some experience in the work field and learn more about the techniques used in the field. But um, carrying on from next year, I will proceed with my education. I will do a master's degree. And hopefully, if everything goes well after that, I plan to do a PhD. And I am looking into going to institutions that specifically focus on um, precision medicine, particularly pharmacogenomics, because that will give me a platform to expand my interest in the field and hopefully come to become a research scientist and make translate, translatable research. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Your plans are wonderful. And I like the fact that you want to, um, you aim to do a PhD. It's very uh, important to have such goals, to be always motivated to get up yes, in the morning and true. go to the university and learn then and then and um, I'm sure you are going to have that PhD and uh, impact the society in Africa positively with your research and your findings. Thank you. All the best. Thanks for the encouragement. Thank you. And yeah, I also just need to mention um, 
the work environment I'm in now has been has also played like a very nice role. So I said, as I said, I'm at the South African Medical Research Council, and yeah, because it's like a research institution, you get to see all those different projects, all those different works that are being done in Africa, and it's it's very encouraging. Um, there's a lot of work in TB studies being done in Southern Africa. And you can see there's a lot of people who are doing the best they can to elevate this pain that TB is causing to Africans. So it's been very encouraging for me to just interact with these individuals, interact with other Africans who have the same goal as me. And through them, I can get so much mentorship and it's just a grateful opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Lexi Timina, for your time. Please, uh, do you have uh, a final message um, for, before we conclude this uh, interview? I have a few points. <laughs> so yeah, I just feel like things I never knew, I also need to just pass it on so that hopefully, maybe one day, I put someone who has hopes of becoming a scientist in this field, hopes of studying this field might come across this video and it will be, um, maybe it will be the video that changes how they see things. So I just want to say first that there's lots of online courses for professional development. So even outside your academics, you can always add on to this, particularly on in human genetics and bioinformatics, there's a lot of these uh, courses on platforms like Coursera. So it's just up to you to take it upon yourself to add on to this on top of your school. Um, I think this can really be beneficial for job applications, for example, and just for yourself and, you know, as an upcoming researcher. Um, I think yeah, also it's important to just seek mentorship from those in the field, speak to your lecturers, because what I've come to realize is people are very happy to help, people are very happy to guide you, no one is trying to see you fail with your work, if you have your idea, just put it out there and let these people guide you, they've been where you are before, starting out and they will help you. And um. Because, yeah, there's a lot of research opportunities and more room for African scientists in this particular field of human genetics. So I don't want people to think that you can, you will go and study a BSc and that will be it. There is great opportunities that and there's good, amazing things you can do with your BSc degree. So it doesn't mean that you will just end up lost or you won't end up using your degree. So, yeah, believe in yourself your dreams are valid you can do you can be the change that you want to see and lastly um because we are here because of linkedin <laughs> i have to <laughs> give credit to linkedin i have to say that people need to utilize linkedin i have made really excellent connections in linkedin i have found really great opportunities there linkedin is where it's at so yeah, look at what people are posting, look at what people in your field are saying. You can get research ideas from there. You can see what's happening in your field. You, networking opportunities, work opportunities. And as our case here, yeah, you get interview opportunities and <laughs> you can get to get exposed. So it's it's very nice. Exactly. Thank it's, you so much. Yeah, it's very uh, good, important to be active on social media. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. to improve uh, with our expertise, with our knowledge, and also get have connections. Who knows? These connections are going to help us in the future. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Because yeah, imagine if I decide, okay, maybe I'm going to pursue my studies in Germany, and now I know you're here. There. That is yeah. already a connection before. Wonderful. Wonderful. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Lexi uh, Timina, for sharing uh, your Thank remarkable you so insights with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's very much a pleasure. <laughs> to our viewers, uh, if you enjoyed this uh, conversation, don't forget to like, share, and uh, subscribe. See you next time. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.